Welcome to our Curious Colorist video. This is a quick and easy guide that's been inspired by nature and camouflage. Um, getting that effect of kind of looking through layers of leafy detailing. Um, so it's great for bushcraft projects. We're going to do it on our pouch. Uh, this is the belt pouch. This is made from firm calf leather from our UK Makers Scrap and Remnant Pieces bags. Uh, this is just one of the light tan, comes in all different colours and this paint effect can be used on any of the colours including black. Um, it's They sit on the top so you don't, there's no limitation to when, where or what kind of leather you use this from. But this firm calf leather works really well for this project which if you want the details on go to the website. We finish the pouch with the leading edge in dark brown. Um, and we've waxed over the entire thing with Ducks Wax. Although the paints are waterproof, the rest of the leather needed a bit of extra protection. So these are the new hybrid waterproof, waterproof <laughs> opaque paints and they're all available on our website. Um, we pictured the extender in the video, but we didn't actually end up using it. You'll see in other videos what the extender does and why and for this, it ended up being better to just use the clear, clean lines of the paint. So let's get started. Little demonstration of some of the new paints on the front bit of this pouch. I want to make it look a bit camouflage. It's going to be on a belt pouch. I just want this front flap to be covered. So I've got my line roughly there, but I thought it might be quite nice to have a little wave in it. So in order to just get the effect over the area I want, I'm just going to draw out keeping it as smooth as I can, a bit of a wave. Let's just hold it over. I think that's going to be a little bit, let's make it a little bit more interesting. And we'll cut that away. So this is just, um, it's the Scotch Blue Tape masking tape, which is just a little bit more gentle on the leather surface. Just cut that. So I have my colour palette here. Um, I have the Ophelia Green, Pumpkin, Pistachio Green, the Cashmere Brown and some Extender Fluid. Um, so what I'm going to do when I do this is I'm going to start with the darker colours and then put some of the brighter in just as highlights. And to get the effect, you can make camouflage patterns by painting them in. You can look them up online how to do them. This is more of a um, multifaceted one um, to give just a kind of blend as if you were kind of looking through woodland and seeing different layers of light. Um, so in order to do this, I'm going to use a piece of brown paper and I'm going to screw it up pretty tight into a little ball. And then I'm going to open it up a little bit. And then I'm going to wadge it a little bit like that. And that's going to be how I'm going to apply the paints. Um, so what I'm going to do first is put some on with the sponge. So I'm using these cut and dry, um, cut and use sponges, which are on the website. Um, these are really fantastic for applying. They just have this solid foam this side for gripping and a really um, good absorbent that doesn't allow too much spread. Um, so I'm going to start with the green, the Ophelia. I'm just going to try it without the extender for now. I'm just going to make some patterns over. I don't want to get too many hard lines, so what I want to do is just smooth some of those out. Um, so you don't want anything where it gives you a straight, too much of a straight edge. So just smooth those out a little and it also just spreads the paint a little bit. And then I'm going to put that one down and take a new piece of the sponge for a bit of the brown. So I'm, as I say, I'm going for the darker colours first. But before I do that, I'm just going to dry. They're drying quite quickly, but I'm just going to give them a little burst. With my hot air gun, I just on a very gentle setting, I just want that paint to be solid and dry rather than actually blending. So other times I might actually use it to blend. But with this, with, I'm just going to go over. Uh, 
and you don't need too much of anything if you think you've done too much on like that area there I'm just going to smooth a bit of it back and then again I'm going to dry those off because I want the lighter colours to pop away a little bit Here is where I'd go to use my screwed up ball of paper. So I'm going to kind of pinch it into a little bit more of a dibber type shape. And I'm going to go to my pistachio green. So I've got some nice, just make sure I've got some on there. And when you go to put this down, you kind of get more of a random shape with this, this technique. Something like that will do. Less is more. And again, drying it off. Another little piece of the brown paper so that I keep my colours quite intact. And I'm just going to look and see where I've got next to my line where I may be. I kind of want a quite definite line to appear on this wave, so this will be where I might just focus some of this last colour. Okay, now I can see that's actually going on a lot stronger than I wanted. I didn't really want it quite as much as that. So I'm going to open my paper out. And I'm going to move it and lift it off a little. Just to minimise it a bit. a little bit lighter and I think that's fine now you might notice I have some stitch holes here so what I want to do is to be able to go and put my row of stitching around my front bit of the pouch but I'm going to do that after I've glued this front facing on um, but I've left the stitching until after I've done this finish now these paints are waterproof um, this is an aniline firm calf leather that I've used um, probably what I'll do is I'll get everything made up and finished and then I'll give it all a light outdoor wax. Um, but once these paints are dry, they will be colour fast, waterproof. So now we can just take this off. And there we have it. So this will be the front part of the pouch.